Good evening. Four people have been arrested at a rally today organised by the English Defence League. There were violent clashes as thousands of people turned out for both this rally and a counter-demonstration from Unite Against Fascism. One police officer was taken to hospital. Charlotte Grant reports. It was meant to be a peaceful protest. A rally organised by the English Defence League in Birmingham city centre. But the demonstration turned nasty. BDL supporters had come from all over the country. Some sang and chanted, while others explained why they'd come. It's not a racist thing. It's here to stand up and say we've had enough of it and we're sick of being a minority. That's the only thing that the EDL stand against, is the extreme Muslims. But as the EDL supporters were slowly moved down to Centenary Square for the rally speeches, the streets were soon taken over. And a standoff between police and protesters. At the moment, the challenge is for the police to keep the EDL protest behind this line. They know that just on the other side is the counter demonstration. No right to be in Birmingham! The other demonstration was led by anti-fascist groups. It too began peacefully, but it wasn't long before the atmosphere changed. As some people tried to split off, the police moved quickly to make sure the two groups remained separate. For West Midlands Police, it's one of the biggest operations the force has seen. More than a thousand officers on the streets, extras drafted in from as far away as Devon and Cornwall and Cheshire. But with everything that's happened recently, police say their response is justified. We've had three bombs at three mosques, so our Muslim community are feeling very tense at the moment. We haven't got a figure on how much it's going to cost. It will be expensive, um, but it's really important that we have a safe day in the city centre today. This evening, many of the EDL supporters are back on coaches and heading home, and time for Birmingham to recover. Charlotte Grant, ITV News. Police are investigating the death of a man who was found collapsed in a street in South Normanton in Derbyshire. He was discovered just after 11.30 last night on Mansfield Road and taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead on arrival. He's thought to be 32 years old and not local. A search of the area has been taking place today. Counter-terrorism officers have been granted extra time to speak to two men detained under the Terrorism Act in relation to three explosions near to mosques across the black country. Officers now have seven days to question the two Ukrainian men arrested in Small Heath on Thursday, following incidents in Walsall, Tipton and Wolverhampton. Five weeks of disruption to rail passengers is underway, with the closure of one of the Midlands' busiest stations. It's to allow major improvement work to the railway around Nottingham. Buses are replacing nearly all trains in and out of the city. This Peter Bean reports. Deserted platforms and eerie quiet. This is how Nottingham Station will stay until the last week in August. Outside, though, it was all action. Passengers getting to grips with replacement bus services. It's not ideal, but as long as I get to where I'm trying to get to, it doesn't really bother me. I think it's horrific. God knows what it's going to be like on Monday morning. The work to improve the station, track and signalling is something never seen on this scale before. I think people will get used to it. I think what we've got to ensure, uh, remind people about, that this is £100 million of work being spent. It is going to be for five weeks, uh, but after that it's going to be well worth it. It was a brave day to kick things off. Nottingham was staging a national running event and a music festival. Plus, workers on East Midlands trains began an overtime ban today in a row over industrial relations. Yes, there will be some. Um, disruptions to services. There will also be some cancellations of services because of lack of trained crew. Um, but that's a consequence of management's intransigence. Now here's a site you won't see much of over the next five weeks, a train in Nottingham Station. This is the hourly service to Skegness and in the holiday season it's the one service that East Midlands trains felt they had to keep going. It'll take a bit of getting used to. One person who seemed unfazed by it all was this train spotter, although today he was spotting buses. 
Peter Beam, ITV News, Nottingham. And in Birmingham, it's been the first day of 24-hour closures of tunnels in and out of the city centre. Things began smoothly this morning, with traffic flowing well into the city. But by lunchtime, queues were backing up to beyond the children's hospital. For alternative routes and all the latest on the closures, head to our website, itv.com central. The Leicester East MP Keith Vass has said it's worrying that police and crime commissioners seem able to sidestep statutory processes for sacking chief constables. His comments follow the controversial suspension of Neil Rhodes, the chief constable of Lincolnshire Police, for potential conduct matters by the county's police and crime commissioner Alan Hardwick. The suspension was later overturned and Mr Rhodes has returned to his former duties. Football now and thousands of Coventry City supporters have marched through the city centre today in protest over the future of their club. Fans are angry after the Football League approved plans for the club to play their home games in Northampton, 35 miles away. Led by two Lady Godivers, Sky Blue fans were in full voice as they made their way through the streets of Coventry this lunchtime. And their frustration at the latest chapter in their club's history was plain to see. This is where we belong! Several thousand supporters set off from Gosford Green, where Singers FC, the club that became Coventry City FC, played their first match 130 years ago. But this was no march of celebration. Rather anger at the Football League's decision to allow a three-year ground share with Northampton Town 35 miles away. Lifelong supporter, should never move out of Coventry. Charlie! And as you can see, the amount of people here now, it tells you we want it to stay in Coventry. Keep Coventry in Coventry, it's as simple as that. Why play outside the city? I never thought that we'd be actually moved out of Coventry City. It's in the name Coventry City Football Club. It's very simple. It needs to stay in Coventry. The city's two MPs have held a meeting with the sports minister to raise their concerns about the club's move away from the Rico Stadium. It's thought today's march was the largest gathering of Coventry City fans in the city centre since the Sky Blues 1987 FA Cup celebrations. But no unbridled joy today, just a vow to fight on until the club they love stays in Coventry. They want to move our football club to Northampton. The Football League are complicit in this move. They're just sitting by, approving the move. We're hoping this is a last chance to get a message to them to change that decision and keep Coventry in Coventry. Well, we've had some great sunshine over the last few weeks. Will it continue? Time now for a look at the weather forecast with Joe Blythe. These will keep your ears warm, but you can't hear anything. It's half past four. Hello, a very good evening to you. I hope you're having a lovely weekend. Not feeling quite as hot over the next day or two, but then temperatures will build through next week, becoming very hot and humid and the risk of thunder showers increases through next week and by Wednesday some very heavy downpours expected with up to four inches of rain during Wednesday and into Thursday. More on that in the next few days but back to this weekend and we're doing really nicely, dry and fine this evening, slightly more cloud around than we would like in one or two spots today and overnight tonight again that will thicken up. Still quite a muggy night, temperatures no lower than 14 or 15 Celsius in the towns and cities. Now tomorrow, again, quite cloudy to start the day, especially for eastern counties. Further west, the best chance of any brightness. During the afternoon, I think it will cheer up, probably more sunshine around than we've seen today. It stays dry and temperatures are fairly pleasant, 24 or 25 Celsius in a light breeze. Flyby, sponsors of ITV Central Weather. Suffering from hay fever. ITV Pollen Count is sponsored by Benadryl. Now, we'd usually expect grass pollen levels to be very high with the fine weather, but in fact, many of the grasses are dying away because it's been so dry. Still, the next couple of days, it will be high across the region. Bye-bye. Well, that's it for now. We'll be back with more news tomorrow at half past six. And don't forget, if you want to catch up more on that EDL rally, you can log on to itv.com central to catch up with the latest news and all the weather. But for now, though, from all of us here on the weekend team, do have a very good evening. Bye-bye.